Last week, we did an upgrade to the latest version of Windows 11 to 5H2 on unsupported hardware. This week, we're going to do a clean install, so stick around. There are many reasons why you may need to do a clean install versus an upgrade. It could be that you attempted the upgrade to the latest version of Windows 11 on your unsupported hardware and it failed midway through the upgrade. Or maybe you just need a fresh clean install. A lot of times, especially if you're on unsupported hardware, you may not be able to upgrade from Windows 10 or even an older build of Windows 11 to the latest version 2.5H2. But typically, a clean installation will resolve that. So that's what we're gonna do today. You will need a flash drive with at least eight gigabytes of free space and the computer that we're going to do the clean install on. You can do this coming from Windows 10 to Windows 11 2.5H2, or you can also do this clean install if you're on an older build of Windows 11. Either way, your version of Windows must be activated, so check out today's sponsor. Are you using an unregistered version of Windows 11? Then you need to check out keyspan.com. Keyspan offers a wide range of products including Windows 11, Windows 10, and even older versions like Windows 7. Need Office software? They got you covered with keys for Office 2019 and Office 2021. And here's the best part, you can save big with exclusive coupon codes by using my code RK250 to get 50% off all Windows series. That means you can get Windows 11 Pro for less than $20. But wait, there's more. For Microsoft Office, use my code RK262 to get a massive 62% off. Buying is super easy. Just add your chosen product key to your cart, apply the coupon code, and pay securely via PayPal or credit card. You'll receive your genuine activation key in no time. Once you have your product key, go back to the activation page, click on change product key, enter the product key you just purchased, and click activate. Be sure to check out keysfan.com. Real quick, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously and it gets my videos out to more people. Thank you and let's get back to the video. We're not going to waste any time today. I'm going to jump right in. So let's go ahead and hop on that computer. Let's go. All right, from the browser of your choice, we're going to navigate first to Rufus. Do not click on any of these ads. You will certainly regret it and then want to blame me. I'm going to come right here. I always grab the portable version. It's the one that I prefer. I'm going to click on that. I'm not going to click in this ad. I'm just going to click this X here to the right and the download has completed. So if we look in our downloads folder, we see we have Rufus right there. Now we need to go get the Windows 11 ISO. So I'm just going to type in download Windows 11. I'm going to click right here. We're going to come down here to create Windows 11 installation media, and I'm going to click the download now. We're not going to use the media creation tool to create the bootable drive. We're just going to use it to download the ISO. And I do that for a specific reason, mainly because my viewers in the UK have told me when we do the ISO directly, it doesn't give them the option for UK English. I'm going to go ahead and run the media installation tool. I'm going to close this stuff out. I'm going to accept the license agreement. Now for me, I'm going to use the recommended options for this PC. And if you are doing this on the PC that you're on, you should do the same. I'm going to click next. And here's where we need to make a selection. So we're not going to do a USB flash drive using the Windows tool. We're going to do the ISO file. And then I'm going to click next. I'm going to save this to my downloads folder and click save. This will take a few minutes to download the ISO and I will skip forward. Now that our ISO is created, I'm going to click finish. And now if I go to my downloads folder, I'm going to have Rufus and my Windows 11 ISO and a media creation tool that I no longer need. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now I'm going to plug in that USB flash drive with at least eight gigabytes of space. And I'm going to run Rufus. 
you want to allow Rufus to check for application updates, I'm going to go ahead and allow it to check for updates. And now you can see up top here, that is the flash drive that I selected. It says Zorn OS because that's the last thing that I used it for, but it's about to get wiped out, so it don't matter. Rufus has found an updated version. I'm going to click yes and let it download those updated files that it needs. Now it's ready. I'm going to come here and select that ISO. All right. Now for me, it has automatically selected the GPT scheme. But one of the things that I like about Rufus is if you click Alt E, it will go into dual UEFI BIOS mode. So the flash drive will be set up to handle either scheme, whether you're MBR or GPT. Because if you're doing this on an older system, you could very well be MBR. Okay, now that we have all of those items selected, I'm gonna click start. I'm gonna close this window in the background first. And then I'm gonna click start. And now we have some options to make here. I'm gonna make sure that these first two are checked to remove the requirements for four gig of RAM secure boot and TPM 2.0 and remove the requirements for an online Microsoft account. I'm gonna check this box to set up a local account. I'm gonna go ahead and set the regional values the same. I'm gonna disable data collection, disable BitLocker automatic device encryption. I always do that because I don't like it when it automatically encrypts my device without my permission. And then I'm going to click OK. Now Rufus is just warning me that it's going to erase all of the data that's currently on that flash drive, and I'm okay with that. And now Rufus is creating the installation media, and I will skip forward until it's complete. Now that Rufus is completed, I'm just going to click close. Okay, now I'm going to go to this PC. Now you can see here, this is the flash drive that we created with Rufus and the Windows 11 ISO. Okay, so now we are going to boot directly from this USB flash drive. So you will need to know which key will allow you to access the boot menu after restart. On this particular system, it's a Dell, so for me that's F12. I'll put up a list here of the common manufacturers. If yours is not on the list, just Google your manufacturer and boot key. All right, so I'm gonna restart now and boot into the flash drive. From my boot menu, I'm gonna select my boot device. For me, that is the UEFI PNY USB 3.2. I'm gonna leave my language in time format for English United States and click next. I'm gonna leave my keyboard input to US and click next. I'm going to agree that everything will be deleted. Install Windows 11 and click next. I'm going to accept the license agreement. Now for me, I have a lot of partitions on here. I'm gonna go through and remove everything except for this last one here, which is actually the flash drive that we're booting from. I don't wanna remove that one, but everything else I'm going to delete. All right, well now on my unallocated space, I'm gonna click next. Okay, now that we're ready to install, I'm going to do one thing here different than the last time. I'm going to disconnect from the internet so that Windows does not do my updates until after I'm inside of Windows. The last time that I did the upgrade for Windows 11 25H2, it took an extremely long amount of time due to the updates. It could also be causing your system to crash or hang up if you're on unsupported hardware. So you may wanna consider disconnecting from the internet at this point too. And then I'm gonna click install. I will fast forward to the next part that requires action. All right, at this screen, it says let's connect you to a network, but I have the I don't have internet option down here. All right, now we are in Windows 11. I'm going to plug my internet back in so that my updates can begin to install. Because I was disconnected from the internet, I'm sure that I need some driver updates. First thing I always do is come down here to my taskbar settings and my taskbar behaviors and I move my start menu 
over to the left because I'm not a psycho. Then I'm going to check on my drivers just to see what I already suspect. And as I suspected, I am missing some hardware drivers, but that's because I was not connected to the internet. These will update shortly. I'm going to go ahead and head over here to Windows Update. And it is checking for updates. There will be some substantial updates that it needs to download since I had that turned off during the installation. So I'm going to let these updates install and then I'll check back in and we'll take a quick look. We are back and I wanted to point out this last update here. So I have done all of the updates successfully. This last security update here, KB5068861, this is actually the latest update from the November patch. And it is taking a little while to download and install, but I did a quick bit of research and apparently there are a lot of reports around the internet for this particular update failing to install and people having to go out to Microsoft's catalog and manually download and install it. I'm not having to do that. It did download. It is installing. It is just being very slow. So I wanted to point it out just in case you run into this. You know, it's nothing to do with your clean install. It's just Microsoft being Microsoft. It is the newest update and it is taking a long time, but it is gaining progress. So with all of the rest of the updates installed, I will check my drivers real quick to make sure that nothing was missed there. So I'm just going to pop over here to device manager. And as you can see that all of those missing drivers from before have now been updated, including my graphics driver. So all is good there. No problems with drivers. See, we're now at 26%. It is installing. It's just taken a while. I'll hop over here to system. Going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and go to about. And as you can see, I am on Windows 11 Pro with the latest build of 25H2. And if I pop over here to activation, we can see that my Windows 11 is active. So all is well there. And obviously my next step will be getting rid of all the garbage that we don't want and tweaking Windows 11 for the best experience. And we'll do that in another video. That's it. And there you have it, a fresh, clean installation of the latest build of Windows 11, which is 25H2. Drop me a comment below. Let me know if that worked out for you. Also, drop me a comment for any future video suggestions. Do me a favor. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel really helps me grow and get these videos out to more people. Don't forget to check out some of these other video suggestions. And as always, thank you for watching and until next time.